Yeah, we're going to start now. I'm all caught up. I'm going to start on the repair and restoration of this movement that I called a challenge. Lots of stuff to be done. Basically, the pivots are going to have to, pivot holes are going to have to all be rebushed. Every one of the uh, uh, lantern pinions is going to have the trundles re replaced. And uh, it's just going to take uh, a lot of work. The, the uh, main wheels are going to have to be rebuilt. And I think maybe the easiest thing to do at this point uh, to start is just to, to drop this as a complete mechanism, just drop the whole thing into the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and just get the gunk off of it. Then we'll take it apart. And I think what we'll do is we'll once we get it apart, we can examine them more carefully. Well, all of the actual pivots and the ends of the arbors. Uh, I have a feeling there's going to be some of those that are going to be completely worn, maybe have to be replaced or at least turned down. And then we will we'll attack the uh, the bushings. Uh, maybe what we'll do first, we'll attack the lantern pinions, get all of those done, then we'll go back and we'll rebush and then put this all back together. So we're just going to put this into the ultrasonic right now and get her get her cleaned up. Okay, now this is through the ultrasonic cleaner. Nothing else done. So we can uh, get a couple of containers and we'll start taking it apart. Let's see. <coughs> front side off. Got a pin holding here. And this is the intermediate wheel. <clears throat> so now we take that washer off. And we can take the center wheel off. Okay. Now we've got the Our pipe, we've got the intermediate wheel. There should be a washer behind it. A uh, tension washer. Okay. Now we can get a screwdriver. Take the perch off. here. This is called so-called spring. <clears throat> Man. All right. Does that? Okay, very good. All righty. The bunny rabbit's out. Come here, little bunny rabbit. <laughs> oh, that's a mess. Well, somebody put a nail in there. I can't believe it. They put a nail in the place of a pin. Put a brad in there. That's supposed to be a pin. tapered pin so it wedges in there. Look at that. That's a brad. Good grief. Okay, here's the crutch. Anchor. <clears throat> oh my goodness. Hmm. 
this might create a problem. I mean, that is really badly worn. That's how bad it's worn. The other side over there, that's going to create a problem. I we'll have to deal with it later. The other thing we need to do now is get the uh, spring undone for this. That's a heck of a way to put a spring in. That's a good way to get it caught in the gears. That shouldn't go way down there. Anyway. Okay, as I remember, okay, these won't come out until we actually take the plate apart. This will. And this will. If we can get past the hammer. Hammer is not going to come out because it catches on a, another arbor up here. Well, maybe that'll come out. No, that won't come. Yes, it will. I don't know what the heck that piece of wire is supposed to do up there. Man, people, somebody put a bunch of crap in here. It didn't belong. Anyway, this front lever. What did they think they were doing? A little piece of wire in there. That is not part of the movement. Somebody stuck in there to keep that keep that lever from moving. Just a lousy way of doing things. All right. Now this should come forward. Anyway, we got four pins. These should all be straightforward pins. Shouldn't have to be bent that way. Oh, man. Before, so that just got to be a tension, tension spring. That's all. It must be holding that on. Yeah, that's it. It takes the count wheel off. This little thing is held on with a pin too. I've got to see that little gear. Okay, I can see it through the magnifier now. You can see it's right here. The little pin that goes through. There's a hole in the arbor and a hole in the gear. The little pin goes through all the way. And you get that pin out of there. Hmm. Finally. There's a pin. They should come off, but sometimes they're stuck. We gotta get in. I'm um, gonna have to drive that out with them after we get the plates apart. And this is gonna be stuck to the outside plate here. That little gear. Okay, there we go.
worn out lever, fan, second wheel. Let's check this. Ooh, baby, this is really worn. That's really worn. Look at the garbage. It's still on there. You know, it's been through the ultrasonic cleaner. Trash still on there. There. This probably won't show up in the uh, video. But if I take this knife, put it on top here and try pushing across, I catch a, there's an edge sticking up there, which means that the surface of this has been worn down. Uh, that's not good. That This thing gets worn, and that's what causes the cuckoo not to work right. All right, we've got... Uh, Escape wheel. Oh man, I can't believe how bad those trundles are. Those have to be replaced. Second wheel. Yeah, same thing. There's a groove cut in the harbor so it can't go either way bring the groove to that spot and bring it right out okay and there's that plate now we got to get this little gear off of here and uh, these wheels are kind of loose Take this apart to examine everything. Man, somebody put a piece of wire in here. It's about five times bigger than it needs to be. I'm just going to cut that. No need. For, we'll put a new one in. worn is this thing here until I cut that away I don't know what's inside usually it's a it's a piece of hex brass been pounded over rounded pounded over here but the pieces are held together by all these pieces all come apart if you cut this off and then there's a piece of hex brass in there that uh, keeps it from turning. Anyway, let's see how badly worn that is. That's, that shouldn't flop like that. That makes it so loose that it can happen under the right circumstances is that that click if this is loose, and the click is loose, then the click can sometimes do this, fall down behind the wheel. Then there's nothing to keep this from rotating, and the weight falls all the way to the bottom. And you get problems, because uh, all this stuff just gets ripped all the heck. It maybe just needs to be filed off doesn't look right. Yeah, it just needs to be refiled. And then I think it'll be alright rather than having to make a whole new click. The other one I took apart already. 
Now what's interesting is the click on this one is different from the click on that one. So I'm assuming that either this one or the other one was made at some time in the past. This one is really bad. I mean, it is so floppy on here that definitely need to do something with that one. So, anyway, it's all apart. There we are. There's strike stuff. There's time and motion work stuff. There's the two plates, so we'll go from here. And here is just exactly the kind of thing I was concerned about. I got this apart, got it apart. I could kind of tell it probably was going on in there. This, look at that, that pivot. That's supposed to be cylindrical in shape. And you can see that's anything but a cylinder. The uh, here's here's the shoulder of the pivot, and you can see that's worn here, and that's worn at a taper. This is that one that was in a pivot hole where the uh, this didn't extend all the way through so it's actually being worn in a, like a tunnel in the, in the bushing and uh, it's just a mess so this uh, there's one probably too thin to just cut I probably can't cut that down this will literally get cut off. I have to drill a hole and use uh, pivot wire to put a piece of hardened steel wire in to replace that whole pivot. That's just not a, just simply not a proper pivot. There's the pencil. This is the arbor. Here's the shoulder. And this pivot is supposed to be this diameter. Comes straight out to the end and then off. How badly worn that one is. I think we'll be replacing that pivot. And now here's a pivot on the escape gear. Again, you can see where this is supposed to be the shoulder of the pivot back here. There, you can see how badly worn that is. So, there's another pivot we're going to have to replace. And then we look at the look at the trundles on the on the uh, escape wheel uh, lantern pinion, and you can see how worn those puppies are. We're going to be replacing all of the those, so plus that pivot. Here's the pivot on the uh, chain wheel. And you see it's not cylindrical either. It's uh, tapered toward the outside. Other side can't tell too much. This is the uh, this is the bearing surface here. Um, that's definitely not uh, cylindrical. Okay, on the uh, strike side, this is a chain wheel pivot, and you can see some deep grooves up near the shoulder there. They've got to be taken out. And the other side, I don't imagine we're going to be able to see too much there. Some dirt scored a little bit, but uh, just dirty. Any 
way. Again, we have a pivot that's not cylindrical. It's uh, definitely barrel shaped. That's going to have to be reshaped. And on the other end, yeah, not particularly great. It's uh, got to be redone. Now, I was telling you about this cam now, under the magnification. You actually see this ridge. There's a ridge back here that uh, shows that that thing is worn down. get a dirty finger field. Maybe you can see that ridge if you look at the bottom edge of that cam. See that ridge? It comes around. It should be just straight across. You can see it's at an angle. It has a ridge on it. Which means it's, uh, it's worn. Yeah, barrel shaped worn, uh, very badly worn trundles. Yeah. Warning wheel. Looks like we're probably going to have to replace that pin in the warning wheel. It's uh, some pretty good wear on it too. Trundles. See the trundle wear in the uh, lantern pinions. This particular lever, part of the lever, has a detente on it. And this is what stops the pin on the warning wheel when the to stop it uh, from striking after this lever drops down onto a slot on a count wheel that allows this to drop in front of the pin on the warning wheel the warning pin and it stops the strike it seems to be okay however I already told you that this part on the second wheel, that brass cam, is worn. And <clears throat> part of the problem as well is that this brass lever is what rides on that cam and when it gets to this position drops down and that allows that allows a count wheel lever to drop into a slot allows this detente to drop in front of the pin to stop the, the whole business but this also has on it a lever over here that pushes against the lever that holds the bird pushes the bird out and holds the bird door open and <clears throat> if this cam this lever don't lift far enough then this lever will not move in far enough and the bird door doesn't open or it only opens part way and creates operational problems for the way the bird operates and this lever is supposed to have a point on it. And the problem is that point is gone. That's all worn off. It's like somebody's been filing on that too. I don't know what they thought they were doing. 
I'll bet I know what they thought they were doing. I bet they thought they were smoothing it out to make it work better. But in fact, they were making it worse. Uh, so what we need to do on this part is we need to <coughs> we need to build you know, point to it with this wire we need to build this out this should come down actually it should look like this should curve down here and then go back up so it's got about that much missing from the point that should just simply curve around go up and a point should extend down about that far so we're going to have to file this off cut a piece of brass and silver solder it on here and then reshape that into its original shape so that when it's riding on this cam it will lift it will lift up this way from down here it will lift up this way far enough that this lever then will push in far enough to open the door on the uh, for the cuckoo to come out there's a lot of wear there when we're looking at this anchor problem I got is that is a very deep groove and if I grind that I may be able to grind that out if I grind it out it might change the shape of the uh, well probably will change the shape of the anchor and that's going to create a problem and then I have to readjust the whole it's going to throw the whole geometry of the anchor all or the escapement off so we'll have to mess with it see there's also on the other the other pallet there's a, a groove in it that we're going to have to grind out and that is not nearly as easy because as you can see there it actually makes a notch so uh, I don't know. This might create a problem. Another fun. Okay, anyway, one more issue. And in replacing the uh, trundles, uh, some people use a puller, and they'll they'll use a puller and they'll pull a shroud off the end of the shaft and lift the pins out the trundles cut new pins and put them in here and then try to push the shroud back on and fit all the six pins into the holes I have I guess it's okay if you can line them all up and then if you can find a way to tighten that shroud back on good and tight because the last thing you need to do is have this shroud turn on here after you get everything back together and your trundles end up twisting this way as the shroud twists so what I like to do is I like to actually cut through the trundles and pull them out Redrill the holes or clean out the holes on the end and uh, and then put the, the pins in and that's what we're going to do alright what I've done 
is they've measured, found a spot where the trundles are not worn. And I've measured round and round and round. And this comes out to about 0.7 millimeters. So I have pivot wire, pinion wire, that's 0 0.7, about 0 0.7 millimeters. So that's what I'm going to cut, and that's what I'm going to use. So the first thing to do is to cut those trundles. Now each gear is a different size. This one is going to be 0 0.7. Cut all those through my side cutters. I couldn't do it with a camera in a way. And now what I gotta do is take some long nose pliers and grab a hold and twist and pull. And it's like pulling teeth. As I can see. Need my other glasses. Okay, grab a hold. Twist and pull. pull the halves out and I'll also push them through the top so you can grab them this way the other halves just pull them out they just like pulling teeth like so there we go it look like Looking through two magnifiers on a video screen. Makes it kind of hard to see what I'm doing. Anyway. Pull them out. Magnetism. Great for some things. Terrible for others. One thing you can try, which I didn't do on this one, is easily those popped out the top. Sometimes you just grab a hold of them, don't even cut them, and they'll push out the top. But normally, they're uh, they're pretty much wedged. worry about finding that one. Took off for La La Land.
really cannot see what I'm doing here. Six of them total. I'm sticking out there to get old though. It gets dirty. pieces are out. Now what I gotta do is I'm gonna have to take I'm gonna have to cut these pieces and just gonna measure them and cut them. But the, the new wires will push in. When I cut them, I'll just put them in like that. Put in the six new wires and then we'll close off the ends a little bit. Now I noticed that these were absolutely flush with the surface. I don't know how they attached them. Another way of attaching them so that they don't slide back out the holes is just put a tiny dab of red Loctite in as you put each pin in. And I just might go ahead and do that. Uh, some people raise a fuss about using, using Loctite for a couple reasons. One, it's just not an original way of doing things. But neither is buying pre-made manufactured pivot wire, as far as I know. And doing a lot of things with modern techniques. What we want to do is get this back functioning and looking like original. Um, the other reason that people don't leave, like using Loctite is that there's a big argument that goes on all the time among people as to whether or not these pins are supposed to roll. In other words, actually rotate when they're in there. They think it should be closed over the end keep the pins loose inside the holes so that they rotate. Well, my opinion is the only reason that they would have rotated an original clocks is to make assembly easier in the factory. Uh, makes it easier to just drop pins into holes rather than having to press fit them. Secondly, they actually did rotate then they would wear evenly all the way around when you see wear on these things on these trundles like in this wheel oh, that's the wrong one. Put the wrong one here when you see wear on these trundles you don't see them worn evenly all the way around the around the circumference of the of the trundle you see a flat spot worn which means the tooth is going in there and dragging and dragging and dragging and dragging and wearing in one spot so those things are not rotating so I would say that uh, in my opinion it's nonsense that those things were ever meant to rotate uh, I also look at uh, cut pinions <laughs> the leaves on a cut pinion don't turn or rotate and uh, so I'm, I'm of the opinion that they were never meant to rotate. So I'm not opposed. See how these are flush? I'll bet I can pop those out without even cutting them. I'm going to give it a try on this gear. See if I grab low, push upward. No. Oh, yeah. 
and not have to cut these at all. Push them through the top. Grab hold of them and act like a dentist. Not easy. Pull the whole pin out, which I just did. Escape gear. And I'm going to go cut some pieces. What I use to cut this stuff is this little cutter. Uh, it shears the metal that way. And it'll cut through the very hard steel where uh, side cutters or end cutters just won't. These work very well towards shearing. Well, it's just a little hard to measure where to cut, but we fuss with it. So i got to go cut six pieces of wire now to put into that uh, escape gear. Okay, another thing to do before you put the new trundles in is to uh, get in there and clean and polish everything. I use some of that uh, polish with the uh, uh, that I use on the wheels. Kind of rust proof that a little bit, keep it, give it some protection. I'll well, we'll get the trundles made and get them in there. Okay. This seems to work okay as far as sizing these pieces. Take the wire, put it in one of the holes. Put it in the hole. Find the bottom hole. Well, that's gone all the way through. Can't believe they did that. Normally they have a bottom in them, but they don't. These go all the way through. Mark them. I'm going to take my jeweler's saw. And I'm just going to... I can't. This is cumbersome because the camera's in the way. But I'm just going to mark it. Jeweler saw that leaves a mark on it that I can see. Then I can take my clippers. I can't see those. Okay. And I can see where they cut. I can put that mark right on the spot where they cut. Now you do want to put a towel or something around this, otherwise when you cut, that cut piece is going to just fly. And then you just cut them. And somewhere, there is a little piece. There he is. Right there. That's three of them. Three more to go in the same way. Okay, anyway. There's one. Let's try them this way. Now I'm trying to video instead of paying attention to what I'm doing here. Can't grip hard enough to push it into the hole. All right. Can't believe they go through the bottom. Okay, there we are. New trundles and the escape gear. And uh, it looks okay.
Here's the second wheel. And we'll take the trundles out of it. Putting the ones in. See, this will be, I don't know, maybe it'll work. Grab a hold of it. Twist and push upward. Let's see if any of the others can be gotten out that way. Okay, that one's coming out. Hold it and pull and pull. Hmm. Get them out. Okay, here's the second wheel. It's trundles out. And I cleaned it up inside. And well, now this takes a different sized wire. Uh, so we'll get those going and get these put in. Okay, I've got five of them in there. One more to go. So what I do is I'll take my little stone. I should back this off a little. Take my stone, just run around, take an edge off. <coughs> Put it in there, down to the bottom. And I'll just take my saw. And what we'll do is we'll just right up against the shoulder of the <clears throat> shroud. We just make a little mark. I can see where that is. Then I take these nippers and where there's a, a spot in there where I can see exactly where the two halves come together to cut it. Put that mark right on it. Put this inside a piece of cloth to cut so it doesn't fly off somewhere and there's our cut piece and we take that and we put that in the hole it's hard to see put that in the hole and that's gonna I've got a little graver here. I'm push that in. That goes just below the surface. I'm going to take a sharp carboid point and just push a tiny bit of brass over to keep it from falling back out. And there's our new trunnions, our trundles. And now what I'll do is I'll put a tiny bit of Loctite on that. And I guess I can show that. Easiest way to do that is just take a little bit of Loctite and put it here. That's a tiny drop. And then I'll take a, a very fine oiler. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just give a tiny, tiny drop of oil, of a uh, Loctite on there. Put it right in the spot. I've got to get those glasses off. Put it right on the edges. I'll get drawn down in there and that will ensure that it's locked in.
and very shortly that will be dry. And there's the second wheel, new trundles. And after wiping off, you really can't see much of anything. Looks good. All right, my strategy here is now to put a new pivot on this escape gear. You can see how badly this one is uh, is worn. Okay, we're going to start with this particular pivot. I think I'm just going to replace it. We're going to cut it off. And uh, we will do that. I'll just start this way. I'm going to take this right up to the shoulder. Just cut it off. I'm going to take a file. I'm going to flatten that. And I'm going to put it in the uh, in the lathe. I'm going to drill a hole in the end. I'm going to put a piece of this uh, wire in to make a new pivot. Okay, I'll put it in the lathe, draw a hole. Okay. Okay, there's the new 
pivot. Made it a little longer than the old one so that it will extend through the uh, bushing and plate and not wear like that other one did. Okay, so. And the next one is, of course, the escape gear. And uh, definitely have a bad pivot here. So we'll do the same thing. We're going to cut this off, file off the end, and we're going to uh, drill it out, put a new uh, pivot in it. First step, just to start out, just going to take some cutters and cut it off. So, I'll file that flat, and uh, I'll get her going. Okay, now we're ready to put it in the lathe, center drill it, drill it out. Okay, I took the wheel out of the lathe, took it over to the desk a bench, and uh, cleaned out the hole with acetone to remove any oil that might be in there. And uh, now I gotta cut the piece. We're gonna glue it in with Loctite. I'm gonna put just a tiny drop of Loctite on it. I'm just gonna take it, we're gonna tap that in there. joint that gets sucked in there. Capillary action. Okay. Mm -hmm.
but I should know it. And did I get All it right. in there? We have to disassemble these wheels to get the center piece out. And from past experience I know that this is just this is a hexagonal piece of brass that goes through there. And then it was peened over and it looks round, but it is actually hexagonal. And I have to take this apart, get that piece out, get some new hexagonal brass, drill a new hole through it to resize this hole so that when I put it back on the wheel, it's not going to be flopping around like this. I mean, this has, look at how bad that is. All right, so we're going to have to take that apart. And the way I do that, I've already done it to the wheel I'm going to be working on, is I have to I reverse the jaws in my three-jawed chuck, put this into the lathe, and then I just cut off, I just turn off this piece that's sticking out here. Just cut that right off. Okay. So here's the wheel. Worked on, had it in the lathe. And I cut that round piece off, and you can see that underneath that, it's actually a hexagonal piece. So now what I can do, I take off this then you take this off then you take the cog out which has, and that's how this is held tight. The reason you have that hex piece in there is for both this, which has a hexagonal hole in it, and this, because you don't want them moving. So that comes out. This is what the chain rides over. And then here's the outside part of the chainway here. And then this piece of, this is the piece of brass. I'm going to have to, I'll put this in, and I will cut this off. I'll turn that off with the lathe. That'll remove this whole piece. And what I'll do then is cut a new piece of brass uh, to replace this piece. What we're doing is we're just, in essence, replacing this brass X with a smaller hole that will fit snugly around the arbor. And this goes on like so it won't be doing this it won't be doing this we'll also kind of clean this up dress up the uh, burrs and what have you. you can see from the wear there's burrs on the back uh, just some wear will We'll just file out and clean up the wheel a little bit so it works a little smoother. And we got to do that to both wheels, so that's what we're doing right now. I'm going to do the one for this, I'll do the other one. Uh, examining the ratchet wheel and kind of cleaning things up, getting the things out of it. Uh, going around here. Thing looks okay until... I get to here. I marked it. This particular tooth is pretty worn off the top. And when you put it in the ratchet ratchet wheel, the click just barely catches onto that. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that out of there and I'm going to replace that 
a piece of brass, cut a new tooth on it, make it a little bigger. As down the line, <clears throat> I can see where as it wears even just a little bit. That click may not catch on that. And a couple years from now, that could create a disastrous situation. Especially if that snaps off, you could end up having a, a freewheeling wheel click doesn't catch on that and then ends up ripping a bunch of other teeth out and weight falling down. Uh, that's not a good idea so I think maybe we'll look at replacing that tooth. I mean if you look at it from the other side as well it just looks extremely extremely short. Okay we put a little die on there scratch out the area we're going to cut out and uh, we use our jeweler saw and cut that out. Finish it with a file. And now we're going to use just a piece of brass, tiny piece of brass, and we're going to cut this, file this and cut it to fit in there, and I'll remove this. has been cut, fitted, now we're going to solder it. Okay. There's the replaced tooth. Not completely blended in, but close enough the way it looks and uh, there's what I've left okay so anyway a little better tooth in there I think it'll work a little better okay, now we've got this, this uh, tooth replaced that I kind of worried about wheel looks pretty good now it's all dressed cleaned and uh, 
Now what I was concerned about is, there's a hex hole. Here's the hex brass that I've got. I was worried it might be too small or too big. But, perfect. Perfect. So that's the next step, is go ahead and <coughs> get that before I reverse the jaws on my chuck to do the job I'm going to take uh, dismantle this second one Here's the hexagonal piece. Cut that round piece off. And here's the pieces. Um, man. That's a pretty good ridge on that. And we'll get it. parts now after they've been cleaned for the two chain wheels and uh, is cleaning these up found it kind of interesting this is the chain wheel from the time side and this is the chain wheel from the cuckoo side and the shoulders that they go on the inside of the wheel in the case of the time side are made from brass and from the cuckoo side are made from steel it's interesting. Gets me to thinking as to why would they use brass on one and steel on the other? Unless one either they had a decision changing the materials that they were using and they were using up old stock on one of them, whether they were switching from brass to steel or steel to brass, or more likely, my opinion is they uh, outsourced the uh, uh, some of this stuff and uh, the chain wheels may have been made by a another company or more than one vendor and so you end up with either the vendor changing the materials that they're using or uh, more than one vendor providing and one provided it in steel and one provided it in brass kind of interesting I sure like to know which one it was but uh, there's no functional reason why one would be used over another or why there I mean there would be no functional reason to use brass on one side and steel on the other it had to have been probably a manufacturing thing so now we gotta make the new hex pieces and then put these all back together and we start off by just cutting a piece off the stock that we had I just took it over in the other room and used the hacksaw and I'll put it in this is an old end here I'll put that end in and face it off and we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. 
back together then is to take our newly machined little piece that's going to hammer the hell out of it. going to close that hole some so I'm going to have to re uh, broach that. Got that close better than this side. I got to get on this side a little more. And as you hammer, kind of pull the hammer so it's Moving outward, it's called planishing. Just trying to spread that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean that up. The file, take a little bit of that off of there. thing you do take one of these well I better check the fit I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to redo this See, that closes that up so I'm gonna take a brooch go down with the brooch again is it uh, all that hammering and it compresses things. And it 
does close the hole up. Okay, so I'll open it back up again. But we're going to have to do it again when we pound the other side, so I'm not going to be too fussy with it. That's getting close. Okay. Anyway, let me back this off. All right, now we've got that reattached to this. So now the next piece that goes on is one of these. That's the channel of the uh, chain wheel. Here's the chain, cogs. That goes on next, like so. Then the next one of these goes on this way. Like so, and then finally, our uh, cogwheel. Now what I got to do is I got to pound these edges over right here. These edges of of that. Uh, let's just peen that over to tighten this up. And that'll be our wheel again. So, well, there's no sense my putting that on the tape and making all that pounding noise again. Okay, what I do then is a little flat punch here. And I'll find all high spots. Hit them down. this out and then we'll look at the end. Okay, there's this piece I'll put back together. Let's see how it goes on. Goes in here. Get the click out of the way. There's our click wheel. Back together. And now you see that thing was flopping around before. There's no way that's flopping now. Now I gotta do one. We'll put the wire back in, get it back together. But that thing will work super now. So there we go. Okay. We'll proceed from there. All right. With those pivots replaced and the. Uh, lantern pinion trundles replaced. This is running relatively smooth. So now what we got to do is we got to replace some bushings and uh, from what I can see all three on this side need to be replaced. So it's going to run with the cable off this side running down and by putting pressure on that side, we can see where the pivot is being pulled. Like, look at the second wheel here. When I push on the side, then, you know, that's the worn side. The unworn side is on that side. So, so I know where to go with this. Three things. First of all, it's the front side of the clock, so I'm just going to put a dot on which and just indicate what's the front, which you know, which side of the gear faces front, so I know which pivot to put in which hole. And then, if I know that this is going to pull this way, 
and it's pulling the pivot over to that side, then I know that the worn, unworn side is right here. So I know where to, to file. And then if I, generally, now if we look at the next one, it's going to be in the opposite direction. Here's the worn side, so this is the unworn side. The unworn side up here is going to be opposite. It's going to be up here. Okay. Then we're ready to bush those six. When we get those done, get those bushings in, we also have to bush these rabbits for the uh, for the crutch, for the anchor. And uh, we get those done, why we can then take a look at uh, And grind that anchor then the, and put it in and see if it's going to run with the anchor being ground and polished. If not, then we'll have to go some other way. Okay, first pivot or, or pivot hole we're going to push is the front side. That's this side and that's this hole. And we can see this movement is not as great as, you can see where the movement is greatest this way. And uh, so our wear is up on the top, on worn side is over this way. So we're going to, well first of all we're going to measure this, see what size we're going to need. And I come up with 1.1, 1, 1, 1.15, okay, 1.15, so we'll use a bushing with a bore of, of one, and we'll bore that out, so I'm just going to get my file, and I'm going to look in here, and it looks like, uh, somebody did a number on this and tried to do a peening job on it. There's a prick punch here where they tried to close the hole, which is not good. Don't like that. So we'll look and we'll see here again. And it looks like the worn side is. I need other glasses. Doesn't really require a whole lot. Just enough to counteract the wear. Okay, that looks good. Alright, we'll go pick out our bushings and reamers. Alright. Here's bushing with a bore of one which will then broach out to 1.15 or a little, small, a little greater. The diameter, outside diameter of the bushing is three millimeters. So what we need is we need to drill out the hole. Two. I got to check just to make sure we're not going to get hole so big that we're going to go outside the margins of the edge of that because it's kind of sticks out. So anyway, the, uh, the reamer we're going to use is 2.97 millimeters. That's just slightly smaller than the 3 millimeters, which makes a nice tight fit. But I'm going to ream the hole out to just 2 millimeters first or two and a half, make it easier to go through with this one. So, and I'm going to go through this hole.
it is. Okay, now we can finish that. Make it just half a millimeter bigger. Now we'll put a bushing in it. And uh, before I do that, so I can lay this relatively flat, I'm going to take this post out of here. Because it's got a thread on it, so it means it screws in. Now we need our post. What I'm going to do, make that uh, bushing go in a little easier. I'm going to just chamfer that a bit. flush. Okay. And now uh, we'll need to broach that. So I need to get a brooch out that'll fit. You kind of rotate the brooch as you spin it. break on it. That looks much better on that pivot. Now we'll do the back pivot. Same thing. Okay, here's the uh, escape wheel pivot on the other side. We're looking from the inside of the plate. And uh, pretty easy to see. This is the unworn side. Here's the worn side. And it also gives you an idea of what exactly is meant by tunneling. Because the pivot on that gear was shorter than the, uh, didn't go all the way through the hole. You can see where it was wearing this way, but not all the way through the hole. You can see an edge on the outside there. That's still, still intact. So it's creating kind of a, kind of a tunnel in here that uh, ends up pushing the arbor back toward the other plate, reducing end shake and also causing extreme wear on the outside of the pivot. Uh, as you saw, the show toward the shoulder of the pivot was still round and cylindrical. But the tip of the pivot was worn in a cone shape, and that's caused by that. So 
we're going to have to file on this side equal to what is worn here. In fact, I'll remove that ridge over there so that when we put the reamer in here, it finds true center. Okay, here's a... We have the anchor with the pallets installed. And you see the groove that's in there and the teeth that you see in there in that wheel are the uh, escape teeth. And we can see how that is going to cause a problem. And if you look on the other side there, you can see the groove on the other side too. So it's my thought that if I can move that gear right there, if I can just take and push this over this way, even the thickness of the teeth, move that over to the unworn portion on that pallet. It can, right now it can move clear over here. If I can move it over to this other spot, in other words, over here, so it rides here, and we have a nice fresh unworn spot for it to ride on. So we're going to give an attempt to move that over a little bit. I've done now so I can actually see as I try to push this in that direction. I put some uh, blue dye on the arbor so that as I move that I can see actually how much I've moved it. Okay, I didn't want to do this while I was actually or film it while I was actually doing it because it's camera get in the way but here's what I did put a crow's foot into my little vise and then I took the gear and I put it all the way in so that it now is on the bottom of that bracket and then I used a punch with a hole in the end and then put it on this arbor over the pivot so now it's surrounding the shoulder of the arbor and I tapped it with a hammer and I have succeeded in moving that just you can see the blue And I've succeeded in moving it about the thickness of the wheel. We'll put it back in and see how it falls on that uh, on that uh, pallet now. Okay, got it moved. This is where it impinges now. So, should miss the worn part now, especially on that other side where that chunk is taken out. That hits there now, it should run okay. So we'll work from there. Okay, I uh, replaced the, put new bushings in, uh, in here. And in here, for the uh, arbor, for the anchor. So now all I got to do is uh, roach them out to fit. Keep the outside down or down so we didn't build too big a hole. I went with a 
this uh, I went with a 0.9 millimeter hole which is only a two and a half millimeter outside diameter keeps the whole size down that we had to cut nope. and uh, so I got uh, to broach these out to almost 1.2 <clears throat> takes a little longer but it maintains the integrity of the brass Let's see how close we are here yeah, that close. That should just about do it oh yeah that's good okay I'm gonna take it this I'll switch up and put in a smoothing brooch already done the other one Okay, we can test it. Okay, that's that's much better. Alrighty, I think we'll put the gears back in, and I just and put a chain on it. And I just want to test run it, see if it's going to work. Okay, just have the time side gears in here now, set up to let it run. Put the chain in. Put a weight on, pendulum on. And here's how our let's move in on that. And we will let it run for a couple hours now before we go back and do the strike train. Okay, it ran all night and I had to rewind it completely. It's got nice, nice pendulum swing to it. Everything seems to be working very, very well. Uh, haven't heard any crazy sounds, anything going off beat or what have you, so I'm pleased that the time side is going to run well and we need to take this back down and we need to do the uh, strike side. <clears throat> These are the three gears from other than the main wheel, three that have come from the strike side and I'm looking at uh, the pivots the pivots are all good enough. I can square them up, polish them, but there are three lantern pinions and the trundles and all three of these are going to have to be replaced because they're just, they're just too worn. So we'll start with this one and uh, we'll do the trundles in it. One of the things we have to do, of course, is to See what size wire we're going to need. So I'll go from here. And that looks like uh, 
9 tenths, 9 tenths, 9 tenths. Okay, so we need a wire that's 9 tenths. What do I have out here? Oh, this is uh, this is uh, one point. Oh, this must have been the one we used for the pivot. I'll put that back and I'll go get a get a nine tenths one. This is my stock of pivot and pinion wire. I have it all over the place. There's twenty two thousandths. Here's 0.9 millimeter right there. That's what we need. Okay, I always forget to turn that camera on record. Okay. It's popping through the top just fine. Of a trundle. Twisting, pushing it up. It pops loose in the top, comes out far enough that I can grab it from outside and continue just pulling it out. Okay, there's all the trundle, trundles out. I think the thing that you got to look at here is uh, <laughs> a little gunk in there. So we're going to clean all that up, put it in a lathe and polish it up a bit and before we make the pieces. Okay. this little guy. Take the mark from the saw, put it in the center. I know the cut is. Gonna be made. Put that right there. Put a piece of paper over it. Down in. Okay, so there's one installed. <clears throat> now we've got six to go in this one.
pinch my fingers. <clears throat> Just a tiny dab of Loctite on that. So I'll just take a tiny drop. Alright, we're doing a warning wheel now. Same thing with this one we did with the other one. Okay, this one had seven to do. Get the seventh one to put in. Make sure the burrs are off of this using a little stone. Hello! Finally, we have to do the fan, place the trundles in that, and we're seven in there, and they're also seven tenths of a millimeter thickness, so we'll take it apart, clean it up, go clean this up, still kind of messy. Yeah, I'll put that in, clean it up, come back and put the... Pins on them. All right, we have uh, five of them in, or six of them in there. We got one more to go. 
The only thing I else I have to say is that uh, if you're doing them this way, just make sure that when you put this in here, that you insert this and say you got to be able to see through here you insert that in the bottom hole and make sure it goes in as far as it will go so that you're cutting at the right length okay. trundles Seal it all up, be ready to go. Okay. And there is the new fly. All cleaned up. New fly. Uh -oh. New trundles. Cleaned up and ready to go. Now all we need to do now is that was the last of the the uh, lantern pinions to do. So now our next step now is to put the gears into the plates of the uh, clock and uh, check for uh, pivot wear and replace pivots. Okay we have the bushings done on the back. They're all done and broached and we have now installed one two, three, four bushings on the front side, the strike side, and then we have to uh, broach those, and then we'll be done with uh, most of the bushing. Okay, we have the bushings now in the strike side, and uh, it'll run that way. Running nicely if we look at we wiggle these back and forth. No movement now in any of those pivots. So this should run pretty good. Okay, now we need to come to resolving this issue with the the cam, the brass lever, what have you. Uh, that brass lever right here goes in if you look deeper you can see the stop pin on the warning wheel back in here it goes against the little detente that sticks out from the front of that brass lever now the problem we have is that this brass lever's arbor is kept in from falling out this slot this reduced uh, ra uh, radius in here is how this comes out through the slot but you put a pin in here well the problem is that there's enough wear that there's how much slop there is in the side shake on that lever and then almost to the point that it can come out of the pivot hole on the other side. But not only that, deeper in here where that brass lever rides on a cam, here's what can happen. This lever slides so far to the right that it can drop down off of the cam like that and if you look down in here you can see the cam is turning now and it's not doing anything with that lever it should be lifting this because that lever is completely off the cam get it back on there I got to lift it up manually slide it back this way now it's on the cam and it should ride like this you can see it riding on the cam till it gets to that that slot 
and then it drops off. You know, the problem, and that's dropping off, is where then it's down low enough that that detente can catch the warning pin and stop the strike. So we've got some problems here with this sideways movement. After analyzing this for a while, there's a couple things I gotta do. I gotta rebuild that lever because it's completely worn off the bottom. It's not moving. It's not moving two things enough. It's not moving the well, it's probably moving the the lever that's on the count wheel. See that drops down in that slot. And that is on the right there. See the cell has to be adjusted. But when this goes into its strike mode, it should be lifting those levers and it should be when that wheel is lifted, that lever is lifted up on that cam, it pushes this lever inward. And that's what pushes the bird out. So when that starts into its strike business, that's all the movement we're getting on that lever. Is from there to there. Should be a whole lot more than that. And that's because the point of that brass lever is completely worn off. So I think I'm going to do two things I'm going to, with that brass lever. I'm going to re add a piece of brass into it, put the point back on so that it gets lifted higher, and thus this lever moves further, as well as the lever in the count wheel to get it out of the slot. And... I'm going to take this so that that can't slide as far. I'm going to have to drill a new hole closer to the brass plates. Put the pin in over there so that this can't, this doesn't have that much slop in it to move and thus fall off that cam. And it's a mess, but that's what we're going to do. And I want to. I'll show you that thing in a minute. All right, here's that brass cam. <clears throat> and this is the hook. Comes down here and it locks like that on that cam. You can see there's a space between the bottom of that lever and the bottom of the cam. We, so we can add a little bit there. Actually in most of these clocks this thing rides up higher. This doesn't rub up here on that cam and that notch up there. I can add a couple millimeters and I'm adding a couple millimeters when this goes into strike and lifts that cam. It's going to lift this arm and it's going to let this arm move further in and do a better job of opening the door. Uh, I can't lift it too much because the warning wheel let me find that one this warning wheel comes around and right now I can move it some the warning wheel impinges on that detente and it's just catching very slightly above so I can move that far enough. I can't let that move so far that it lifts or adds so much to the point of the the point over here. Can't add so much to that that it lifts this beyond the point that it can fall and catch that catch that pin. But it also looks like in the case of that detente that's pretty well worn off there and I can make a longer point on this cam here if this piece were a little deeper so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna cut a piece to make this down further so I can lift this lever up on the on the cam a little further without compromising it's being able to stop that pin on the warning wheel. The other thing I might do is, is I'm building that point is if I add the piece here 
and I make it a little thicker uh, if there is any movement in in that uh, this thing back and forth on the in its uh, pivots pivot holes it's still not gonna this isn't still gonna slip off the end of the cam if it was a little wider it wouldn't fall off the end of the cam so we're gonna add a piece probably take it back to here to give it some strength and uh, bring this out a little bit build this out build this point down and at the same time add on to this detente make it a little wider a little deeper somebody has taken a, in the past has taken a file to this thing and I don't know what they were doing but they filed the daylights out of part of this they filed the daylights out of this here, this round here. I think it was uh, hanging up or something, and probably falling off the cam. They thought it was catching on something. It was causing the, the strike not to work, and uh, erroneously thought it had something to do with this not being lifted smoothly, and so filed that all off. And in fact, they got rid of the whole point that was there. So we'll try rebuilding this. And, See what we come up with. And soldered. Don't want to get the camera near when the heat's going. Okay. Here's where we're now fitting things. Let me see if I can move in here. And if we move this wheel, we can see that the new point on the brass lever is riding the cam. And yeah, we still got them. Move that over some. Riding the cam. And it gets to the notch. And our detente is just a little bit high. So that means we got to take that much off of. Right there's where it's even. I just got to take a tiny bit off of the point again. So we have to get it so that when that cam or that uh, lever drops into the slot on the cam right now that that warning lever will hit that detente and it's just missing it. So we got to make that tab just a little shorter on the on the uh, brass lever. Here's our new brass lever the new end on it so this is just a little long so I have to take that off there's the new detente that I put on it so this I made a little wider so it's not quite as touchy about falling off that wheel so we just have to grind this down some more until when this is riding on the brass cam that this detente drops far enough when this drops into the slot but this detente drops far enough to catch the warning pin. Yeah, that's a mess, I'll tell you. Found another couple problems here. I remember when I was first looking at this movement, I couldn't figure out why there were pieces of wire wrapped around. Look at the look at the side shake in this. Same thing with this one. A lot of side shake. That shouldn't be. Uh, unless these are not from this clock. And I suspect that they may not have been. I think somebody did some s stealing from another one. Here's why. This other lever that's inside here that uh, lifts from the front. This lifts. This is the hour lift, or the, yeah, it lifts on the hour. 
that lifts this lever and that's actually ends up being the warning lever and that's inside here let's see if I can get a pointer right here the warning pin of course we already said when this is in stop the warning pin is against let me run this around to that is against that detente like so when this goes into warning this lifts pin is released and goes against that little loop goes against that little loop that's in there well that little loop let me show you where it's at that loop is right here that loop is supposed to be back and right on top goes on top of this pinion gear actually if it were adjusted absolutely correctly it would ride probably on here that's why I don't know this whole thing is just out of whack anyway this wire with that loop on it there's that loop in there in here that loop that wire loop should be sitting on top of the uh, the gear and it's not it's in front of it so this wire is too long uh, if that wire is too long and there's this much end shake in this I don't think this why this lever came from this clock likewise this lever has that much end shake in fact they didn't put the wire in there that was what was knocking that completely off of the cam because there was so much play So what I'm going to have to do to take the end shake out of this so that we don't get levers going all kittywampus or cattywampus uh, what I propose to do is in this case in this one is cut a bushing for in here that it extends out just a little bit from the from the plate that'll hold that in place right here nope that's not what I want to do yeah it is too if I do that I have my cam riding right it won't get out of it won't get out of whack yeah I think just with a little bushing in there that'll make all the difference in the world for that one then I think I'm gonna have to take this lever and do the same thing on the opposite side and put a bushing in there to keep this from moving back and forth but to see how that affects the front yeah, because otherwise the warning could get into a problem. So I'll make a small bushing for this one that extends out, keep that from flopping around, and make that wire shorter. I'm going to have to have to do more work on this. This has uh, got more mess on this side than shake a stick at. I finally got this working right. Uh, okay. Okay made a bushing for that hole and it extends inside so that we now have this pivoting in the hole when the pin is put in when the pin is put in 
Everything rotates nicely. And we have still have a little tiny bit of end shake, but much reduced from what it was. So we're not going to have that problem of it sliding off where it's supposed to be. So uh, one problem solved. Now let's go to the next one. Okay. Now we're going to test this out. I'm going to put a little pressure on this wheel. Okay, it's in a locked position. I'm going to turn this. Warning. Strike. Okay. Got them adjusted right. Seems to be working okay. Okay. Lock. I mean, warning. And run. Let's try it again. Warning. Run. Good. If you want to see how that works. Let's move in on the pin. Now you see that loop that I was talking about before. That's this one jumping up and down. That's going to jump up so that it's in front of that warning pin. Now watch. Okay, now the warning pin is in the stop position against the detente on that brass lever. I'm going to start turning the minute hand and we're going to see this start to lift. You see that you see that that loop in the background moving up to get in front of the warning pin when it is let go by the detente. Detente is lifted. The pin goes through and hits that loop. Time continues until drops off the cam on the front of the uh, movement. Loop moves out of the way of the pin and the thing can run until the uh, cam goes around once. And of course the brass lever can't drop back down into the cam if we put the count wheel on until it gets into a slot on the count wheel. Here we come up to warning right there. Let's go. And there we are. Okay. Warning. Run. Very, very close at the same time. I wonder if I can adjust that just a little bit more. Okay, now let's watch that pin again. Put some leverage on that. Turn that minute hand. And we'll see the le loop come up. Goes into warning. There we go. And run until it comes back around. Warning. Run. Good. Okay, here was another problem I found. I undid this spring because it had been wound the wrong way and was wound so it was pushing the door out or pushing the perch out. It needs to be wound the other direction so it pulls tends to pull the door back in. So uh, I put the spring back on by unwinding the whole thing, redoing it, rewrapping it in the uh, other direction and now it'll work properly. Over there by the fence. Yeah. 
And it might be that janitor that you talked to something. Oh, Tommy? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know who, who it was. But anyway, he said, I see you got a big branch that came down here. Or at first he said, I haven't seen Don. Is everything okay? <laughs> and I said, yeah, he just in the basement working on clocks for the winter. Yeah. Uh, he said, I see you got a big branch here that came down. He said, does he need help with it? He said, I tried to put the fence back the best I could here. He straightened something up, I guess. <laughs> and I said, yeah, he knows about it. I said, our son Paul has a new chainsaw and he offered to help clean it up. Yeah. And I'll tell Don that you asked him about him and yeah, that you offered. So if you see him and you want his help, I guess he's willing to Yeah, Tommy's a good guy. Okay. Thought I better tell you before I forgot. Thanks. That one's in. Sure, we can get stuff in them. I need a regular pin. Okay. All right. Let's see where we're at here. Okay. There's lock, and our wheels are going to be way off. Where the problem is. See, I made when this is set up right, the pins two take two of these pins on that left wheel, and that pin has to be down here, and this pin has to be down here when this is in lock. Otherwise, otherwise, the uh, Cuckoo wheels aren't going to work right. The cuckoo's not going to work right. Yeah, I gotta gotta redo that again. No sense watching this. I'm back. Okay. I need to get the little gear on there. That should hold it. Okay. Now we got our little gear on. Let's see where we are with stop. Okay. <clears throat> then we'll have to decide what to do with the with the hammer. I don't have any idea where that would be. Block. I think what we'll do is we'll just just move it out that way, and Wade will have to decide how he wants to to do that. How to bend that? Okay. All right.
Okay. Alrighty. Let's bring it over here. Basically same shot as we had before when we first got this thing. There you are. Looks a little different. Remember when we looked down through the top at the at the uh, Here's the back. We'll look down through the top at the uh, lantern pinions. Well, let's take a look at them now. Maybe. Alright, we're going to put chains in it. We're going to hang it up. We're going to test run it for a while. See how things go. Okay, I got her up and running. It's running on 750 grams. Let me run this around to the hour. Yeah, it just went into warning. There it's striking. Striking 12. All right, you just heard that chain slip. And the reason for that is that's the wrong size chain. That new one. The old chain is 42 links per foot. This one's 45 links per foot. So it's not going to mesh correctly. You're going to have to try to find chain that's 42 because it's uh, it makes a difference. The chain will either skip like that, and that puts a puts a load on the movement when it skips. Or otherwise, sometimes when you go to rewind them, they'll also jump the track. So it needs to be the right chain, number, and it goes by the number of links per foot. Anyway, let's go around the front. Okay. Now we should see. Warning. Strike. Half hour. You know, it should strike one o'clock. One o'clock, no one thirty. Uh, should strike two o'clock. And two thirty. No, it should strike three o'clock. Here the chain just slipped again. Four o'clock. Four thirty. Five o'clock. Here's what I'm concerned about that chain. It doesn't, uh, it's going to skip again pretty soon. There it goes. See, it's wanting to climb out of the 
out of the channel. It's not the right size chain. Makes me nervous. But let's see what it does now. it's not falling into links right I can skip okay that's why you need to get chain with fewer links per foot or more links no fewer links per foot Okay, now we'll set it. Yeah, it's about quarter to ten, I think. Yeah, so we'll just leave that right about there. Alrighty, that's it. There it is, all redone. But the chain's not right.